Hi everybody, this video is going to be dealing with Ovation for use in broadcast applications. And by broadcast I mean live to air or, or a production where you're going to need sounds uh, at the time of the shoot. So what we have here is we've got our Ovation screen which contains at the moment uh, what's called a hotkeys cue list for cart player style playback. We can also bring up a standard cue list which allows us to put things in uh, a list like a playlist, but we'll look at them later. Um, I'm going to get some sounds in, so I'm just going to pop in and have a look and find some music. Um, I've got a little browser window here that allows me to audition anything I want to put in, so that's fine. I'll grab that. So I'll grab this one here. Um, when I'm grabbing files, thing to note is that this can be any sample rate, any bit depth, and any file type. Uh, we do real-time sample rate conversion in the project, so you don't have to render. And it can deal with BWAVs, WAVs, AFs, MP3s. Uh, and it'll just decompress on the fly as it's playing back. So once they're in there, I can give them a press and I'll play back. Great. Happy days. Uh, as you can see down here, I've got a little edit window, which allows me to give a little edit. I can zoom in and out and around um, and make some changes. Great. Fine. Fantastic. Um, once I've got that editing done, I can also, if I want to, do some very, very advanced editing by just simply sending it to my integrated Pyramix timeline. What that then allows me to do is handy things like cut the middles out, uh, do some gains in between, whatever I might want to do. When I'm happy with what I've got, I can just send it back to Ovation as a new queue. Blunk, and there we are. So that all the editing here happens without rendering. Again, it's just sending the EDL back and forth. Because I've got a DAW in my computer in the same ovation, whilst I'm actually doing the ovation playout, I can also be making a recording. So I've got these two tracks from the cord. Just zoom in a tiny bit so we can see the recording happening. Fine, fantastic. Happy with that. Again, I can make some edits, cross them together, whatever I need to do. And at that point, I can then send it back to the patient. So now I've got my recording in there. So how we acquire uh, the information uh, can be very, very simple and easy using Ovation and Pyramix together. Once we have our cues into Ovation, we have certain ways in which we can start to allow the cues to do some smart things. And the main area where these things are set are in the cue properties. So with any cue, I can go in here and I can set, well, first off, the way it looks. I can change uh, colors. Um, I can change font sizes, whatever I want to do, fine, blah, 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 blah get all big. Um, and I can also then uh, change the gain, I've got 144 dB down, and as much as I want up. Um, again, nice thing about this gain is that it's real time. I'll just do something with sound. So whilst I'm auditioning, I could be checking the gain as I'm moving forward. Yep. Yeah. Um, the other thing we have here is audio output slot. Uh, Ovation actually allows the user to configure as many output slots as necessary for, for whatever it is you're playing back. Um, I've got uh, a couple of stereo output buses here, uh, a PFL bus, um, and some surround output buses, and a, a listening bus, which will allow me to listen to Pyramix and uh, my PFL bus and things like that. We can configure as many mono, stereo, or surround outputs as we want to. We actually have up to 256 bus outputs that are possible with the, with the main system, so you can kind of use as much as you want to. One of the handiest things about Ovation, though, lies in the way in which we get cues to act with each other. Now, one of the most important things here um, is to allow cues to stop other cues when they're going to start playing back. Most importantly, when we're playing music, because the last thing we want to do is have tons of different music playing back at the same time. Um, so to be able to prevent that from happening is an incredibly important thing. So in the queue properties, in the queue list properties, and in the show properties, we have what are called interaction rules. And interaction rules allow me to very quickly and easily set up a way in which we can allow the whole environment to talk to each other. So in this queue list, because it's all music in here, I'm going to say, stop all the queues in the queue list when starting. Very simply, now what I've done is I've created a rule so that when I start one queue, and then I start the next, it stops the one beforehand. Now, in this interaction rules bin, uh, window, I can actually stop, pause, dim, fire, or select all cues, cues and cue lists, previous cues, next cues, um, 
or any specific queue in any queue list when starting, ending, or stopping with fade outs, fade ins, so on and so forth. Yeah? So I can actually say this, make this a 500 millisecond fade out. Okay, so now, there you go. I got a little fade out at the end of the music, which just makes things a bit nicer. And because this is by the queue list, what I can do is I can name this queue list music, and then I can simply make another queue list, which I'm going to call uh, effects. Now, in here, I'm going to go away from my music, I'm going to go to my sound effects library, and I'm going to grab some sound effects. Fine. Happy days. Now, in music, that works as it should do, but in effects, I can now turn on and off as much as I need to uh, whenever I need to. The other important thing that we can do here is we can start to very quickly and easily allow outputs to be set. Rather than going into each individual queue and saying which output we want to go to, in each queue list, we can also say what output slot we want them to go to. So if I pop my mixer back open, I can see I've got output one and output two. So on output one, I'm going to call this music, and output two, I'm going to call this effects. So now in the music slot, I'm going to say go out slot one, or slot one and two, because it's the music. Um, and then for the effects, I'm going to say please go out slot three, so three and four for that. So now I get my effects out of there, and I get my music out of there. So it's that simple. Now, whenever I go and I drag anything else, let's find some more music. Uh, when I go and find any more to put into that, immediately it's going to be playing out of the right one. As in effects, I'll just use some music just because it's there. It's going to be coming out of number three. Nice and simple. Now, the last thing that I want to deal with here is looking at how to control the system. Obviously, click on it with a mouse and keyboard as I've been doing. We could use a touch screen. You can see these things are set up for sort of touch screen operation. Um, we can use uh, merging zone hardware keyboards, but we can also use control inputs. Ovation is very good at dealing with controls. Um, attached to any queue, while sending out audio, we can actually also send out MIDI and nine pin time code and LTCs and GPOs and all sorts of things. We can see this list sitting right here. But what we can also do is we can also react to this coming into the ovation. So we can trigger cues using GPIs, we can trigger cues using MIDI uh, control interfaces or MIDI note ons or MIDI program changes or whatever it is you want to use. Um, and so it can very easily fit into just about any studio room application. But one thing we also get with the ovation, which is also very handy, is a way in which to very simply make multiple access points for the same system. Now, Usually you'd use a third-party control interface or you'd have multiple Ovation rigs or, or cart player rigs within a studio application. But here, what we can do is very simply use a web browser. And what the web browser allows us to do is it allows us to see our entire show and fire it using... Oh, I'll fire something with sound in it. <laughs> there we go. Fire it using our web browser. So if you want a secondary location, all you need to do is put a web-enabled device on the same network as the Ovation and connect it using the IP address and a port. Yeah. So you can imagine this sitting on uh, a laptop, sitting on uh, another desktop computer, but also sitting on an iPad or a smartphone or, or something else. Um, it really doesn't matter what you use as long as it's connected to the network. And so from that, I hope you can see that Ovation would be a, a brilliant thing to use for, for any broadcast application, really. Uh, it, it's flexible, um, it's, it's easy to use, it's easy to set up, uh, and it allows for simple control via multiple um, routes. Anyway, if you have any questions, you can always go to the website, www.merging.com uh, slash ovation, or email us using the web form. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.